Yeah, hi, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to React JS development session. Okay, before uh, I start, just give me the confirmation that uh, you are able to see my screen and as well as you are able to hear my voice properly. Just give me the confirmation so that we can go ahead. Malaysia. Yeah, fine. So now, uh, so we'll talk about something called what you know, React JS. So before I talk about React JS, so first we'll be uh, talking about a full stack development because this is the area where we'll be knowing about React JS. So before I talk about this word called full stack development, let me uh, give you some small intro about myself. I am Kesho. I have been working as a full stack developer for so many years. And uh, the moment I started my development journey, from that onwards, I have started uh, uh, trainings as well out of my passion. And I am into backend technologies like uh, so both Java technology and also the Node.js environment. I'm equally good with both and coming to the front end uh, so i'm into react js and angular js frameworks angular angular frameworks apart from that uh, html css and i'm good with uh, java coming to the databases so i worked on sql related like you know relational databases like my sql oracle and all postgresql coming to the no sql style i'm into mongodb for so many years yeah, that's it guys let's not waste much time into that uh, let's jump into the subject so the word like you know full stack so why actually we require you know uh, to learn full stack development or what exactly uh, different uh, you know technologies involved in the full stack to start that usually whenever we work with any applications on our daily basis basically they are of two types one is standalone applications. The examples are like this one, which I am using now Notepad, MS Word, calculator in your uh, laptop, some media players, etc. So, these are one category of applications. We do have the other category of applications as well, they are web based applications. we can call them like web applications something like a gmail amazon facebook the purpose of each application will be different but we do have that now if i wanted to work with uh, the first category of uh, applications here that is standalone applications we require only one system So inside that one system only will be working with that standalone application here so when you are talking about that uh, first the application should be created how we will create software applications by writing programs using a programming language we create programs so software will be created a combination of programs all the programs integrated together will give you a software let's say example of ms word what you will do into the ms word you will do you will open a new new file right and you will start writing text over there and you will be adding some image to your document or you'll be adding some table to your document right so you'll be doing uh, different different you know uh, activities through ms word right? each activity can be considered as a, a program here so all those programs together is a software so like that, uh, using any programming language, you know, we do develop it. Uh, let's take example. Usually people do these things with the C++ language or Java, like that. Uh, it used to create them. So after that, that will be created and inside that uh, computer, it will be installed once. And can run any number of things 
that is what usually happens right so if you're talking about a media player media players also will be there right windows media player something like that so you can able to install only once and can be run for any number of times so that's all this is what you know the story of standalone application is about and next we have web-based applications if you're talking about uh, this web-based applications here we need at a time two systems to work with the web-based applications how many systems two systems here so what are those two systems the system the first system is called a client system and uh, the second one is called server system so two systems here client system and uh, server system so what exactly this client and server a simple example i can tell you that when you talk about a gmail you will be using gmail application right? so when you are using uh, gmail applications uh, you will be opening gmail through your phone right so in phone uh, you can able to send mail and you can you know, see the mails inbox everything you can do in this context if you say that your gmail is present in your phone then i can ask you to open your gmail in your computer your laptop you can open it happily you can open it even in your friend's laptop also you can open your gmail provided you remember your uh, you know, username and password credentials then you can open anywhere so means actually your gmail is not stored or not present at your phone we are think we may think like that it is present in our phone but actually reality is not present in our phone then where it is we are only accessing it through our phone it is actually present in another system called the server system in this case it is at uh, you know google office like assume like a gmail server in that gmail server your uh, actual gmail related data is getting stored but you are only accessing through your mobile or whatever so the client can be a mobile or it can be a laptop or it can be a desktop so that system can be anything client system but it will be connected to the server system so server is also a computer server is also a system but uh, whose capability is more it is not like you know your personal computer it may not have something like keyboard monitor and all but a big system will be there it is a server system in which all the programs are already been written over there and we can only you know uh, connect it to that particular server system what is actually main difference between these two categories of applications standalone applications and uh, this web based application the difference is if you wanted to work with this category of applications yeah hi uh, i hope you are able to see my screen again yeah, there was some error related to this uh, go to meeting app so we have discussed about um, you know web application so when you are talking about the web applications or web based applications uh, we require two systems and uh, we need internet actually to connect those two systems in order to work with them the one which uh, we use is like client system and the one where actual data will be stored is called a server system in order to establish the connection between these two or we require internet so let's say uh, let's take example of that one here gmail which we talk now assume this uh, systems here two systems the first one which i uh, created here uh, like this small circle is like a uh, client system assume this small one small box is like a client system and this one is like a server system now in order to uh, connect between them we use internet assume like connection has been established now what we will do we want to connect it to the gmail server right so then we open our client system and there we type uh, something like gmail.com the address of the particular you know, gmail server system then the connection you know what will happen the connection will be properly established and what we will do over there depending on our requirement like uh, let's say we do not have gmail account so far then what we do here we'll be having a form in that uh, uh, we do fill all the details uh, related to that and then end of the day you know we'll be here we'll be clicking a button like you know sign up the moment you do that then your data will go from the client system to the 
सर्वर सिस्टम ये assume here you are entering something like um, your name first name last name username password uh, different different details you entered then the data will go to the server system inside the server system here we'll be having certain programs let's say example here one program called registration program this box is a registration program so what exactly this will do here is registration or i can say register okay whatever it is registration program it will take the data whatever it is coming from your client machine so we know that uh, this is a client machine and this one is a server machine the server computer will take the data which is coming from the client machine then this registration program itself will open the database internally it will be connected to one particular database here and it will open that uh, a database over there and store the user information inside that particular database in this case it is gmail users there might be a database like you know table like gmail users into that gmail users data will be stored once that uh, data is sto data storage completed then that what it is registration it's a program right it will generate one message like your registration successfully completed and that message will be generated here and that message will be sent back from your server program from this registration program the message will be sent back to your client machine whatever it might be the message that message will be sent back from server machine to the client machine the next time what happens you will be doing again you will be opening the client machine that is your computer then you will be connecting to the gmail but this time you will not do sign up or registration directly what we do here simply you write down uh, you will go to login page actually and then you will be typing your username and password over there and clicking a button like submit login button then what happens your credentials like you know your data uh, will go from client machine to the server machine here inside the server machine this time we have another program here assume like this program name is something like you know login program so what exactly this will do here is it will take the data which you are you know coming from the client system it will take the data and what you are entering username and password it will check assume like you created your username account like uh, malesh at gmail.com and the password is 1234 now this time you are trying to log in it will check uh, already it knows your data right in uh, so from the database it will take the data out with the name called malesh what is the username what is the password it is there with malesh at gmail.com for that what is the password it will take it out and that password here will be matched with the password which you are entering if both username and password are correct then one activity will happen if that is wrong see when you are comparing definitely two things will happen so here in this program will be there and that program will compare so while while you are comparing definitely two things will be there may be true may not be true if it is true then what happens is one home page will be generated from the login program and that home page will be sent back from server system to the client system in another case in wrong like you know you entered username password wrong in that case what happens is here one error message will be generated and that message will be sent back from your server machine to the client machine here whatever it's been sent from client to the server here called the request and the opposite one from the server system uh, to the client system whatever it's been going from here to here is known as response so when we talk about any web based application it is just a combination of a request and a responses so inside the server we do have 
multiple programs not just registration or login but we do have uh, separate you know different different category of you know programs will be there depending on the application if it is a gmail you have login right next you have something like a, a send mail send mail program send mail send mail program something like that you have different different if you talk about a, a e-commerce application you have registration login search right like you know uh, cart add cart program buy now place order change address yeah we do have different different programs in there. yeah so when you talk about those programs uh yeah, not just one program but here we do have uh multiple programs over there all these programs together we call it as a software and as we are creating it server side we call it as server side software what we call we call it as a server side software and in order to develop that server side software you need the help of a programming language because you have to write programs registration login like that you have so many programs definitely to write them you have to take the help of programming language server type programming language or server type technologies i say and you can do it through different different you know flavors uh, in different flavors you can do it by using uh, java technology you can do or by using node you can do python you can do or using darknet also we can able to do here so these are the different uh, ways in which you know you can create the server side programs But when we are creating any real time, you know, projects or any real time development, when we are doing, we don't uh, take only, uh, you know, use uh, this one, what you call like, we don't take only the help of programming language along with the programming language. We will take something like. Uh, you might heard this or if not also fine something called framework we use something like framework what exactly this framework uh, uh, will do here is framework is not a programming language first of all then what it is it is built on the top of another programming language Let's say here I will write examples like uh, we have something like Spring. You might have this word like Spring. So when you are dealing anything with the Java, you'll be having something like Spring. For Node, you have something like Express. For Python, you have something like Django. For .NET, you have something like ADO. Like that, you have different different you know flares will be there and. Here it is not just .NET, you have C++, uh, Ruby, PHP, like the different technologies. What I want to say is when you are talking about real-time development, you will be doing Java along with Spring, Node.js along with Express, Python along with Django. Right? So like that you will be developing. So this is the way how we will be creating the server-side software. Okay, fine. The moment you click you know, registration, what to happen, you already written the program in server machine. If you click something like login, then what to happen? So that also you have already uh, written in the server machine, right? So if you search, what should happen? You have written. If you click product, uh, like you know, uh, place order, then what should happen? You have written. Everything is nice, fine. But if you want to say that, like you know, if you want to click the button, or if you want to enter some data and then click the button, if 
you want to do that activities that is if you want to send the request from client to the server okay server is uh, inside the server you created the programs the programs are given the response is fine but if you want to give those request definitely you need something at the client side already server side assume everything created but client said you need something that something is nothing but here a website what it is it's simply a website inside that only we do all these things and website is nothing but if you talk about gmail what you will have registration page login page home page like that even for amazon whatever it is all those are called what web pages so your website is nothing but it's a collection of different different web pages here all web pages together gives you a website now if we want to develop server side uh, software we should be good with one of these technologies then we can create programs all programs together is like a server side software that's it it's been created now this is the time to create about client side software also we need to create client side also the software so if you wanted to create a, a client side software we need to create website and web pages actually you have to create and web pages is nothing but together is a website to create a web page if you want to create multiple web pages first of all we should know how to create a web page if you know how to create one web page you can create multiple web pages definitely here we need to learn few technologies or with the help of few technologies we can able to do that those technologies are html css and javascript html css and javascript to create a web page we need three technologies if you look at this here i mentioned like java slash node slash python slash dot net slash means like you know r right either java or no you don't require to be you know good with the uh, two three things here one is enough any one is enough but if you look at this side i'm writing comma like you know and kind of thing so html and css and javascript so it should be good with all these three technologies uh, to develop the web page we need three means definitely the purpose of uh, all these three must be different so html is used for one purpose and css is used for one purpose and javascript is used for one purpose here. the activity of html is very simple to add the content to your web page you know content right when you talk about content like uh, anything like uh, uh, videos images text whatever we generally see whenever we open any web page that is nothing but a content so to add such content we take the help of html it's a pretty uh, straightforward language just we use tags for its development we can able to get it next is okay you decided to create one web page with some heading assume some heading you want to write like yeah hello all welcome to full stack that's it that is what you want to write in your web page or website that's it but that should be in that statement should be in yellow color or that statement should be in green color blue color what it is and where it should be placed to the right corner or to the left corner exactly in the top or in the center where you want to place it such things are you know done with the help of css so that's the reason css will add stylings to your web page so it's responsible for the appearance of the web page it adds styles to the web page using both css and html we can create a web page and as well as website beautiful websites you can create but the problem is the pages will be static in nature or the site will be static in nature static means here uh, whatever you know uh, you create just it will be uh, what i say we can open and we can see that's it we can't do anything on that just like uh, uh, you'll be having offline pamphlets right some pamphlets if you have just you can only read the pamphlet right you can't do anything in that in the same way it's a, it's a kind of online online kind of document and you can't so you can't do anything on that even though it's a website or a page you can only read about it as a user but you cannot interact with that so that's why we call it as like you know static but in order to add dynamic nature to your uh, you know over page we take the help of javascript and that's the reason we say 
JavaScript decides the behavior of your page. Uh, one simple example I can tell you that when you are applying for a job, assume in one portal you are applying for something like some job application you are doing. Then it will ask like, uh, do you have previous IT experience? There you, you will be having two options, yes or no. The moment you click no, nothing will be there. But the moment you click yes, uh, then what happens? One more box will be opened to below to that, like uh, enter previous experience details, something like that. It will be there. So what I want to say here is that we cannot achieve through HTML. That's a dynamic, right? Because the same site, same application, if I open for me, if I don't uh, choose, Yes, if I choose no, it will appear one way. But for you, if you open uh, application and if you choose option yes, then for you it will appear in another way, right? The same one. So behaving differently. That's the reason it, you know, it decides the behavior of the web page and also it adds the dynamic nature to the web page. As I told you already, HTML uh, is a straightforward language and same is the case with your CSS as well. It is also a pretty straightforward. Uh, we can directly learn HTML and CSS by learning tags. We can learn HTML by learning our properties. We can learn CSS. But coming to the JavaScript, it's a programming language. It is like a like your Java or Python or .NET. But the purpose is front end set. At least now. So here, what happens is uh, we can develop the applications using pure JavaScript. We can able to develop it. But uh, there are frameworks. The way you have framework for backend. The same uh, is this one Java or Node. We have framework for JavaScript as well. Yeah. Uh, but before that, uh, if you look at this, whatever the server side program we created here, this something like this orange or this yellow color thing. Yeah. So this is the one uh, coming to any web application. This will be there definitely all these programs and all. But as a user, we cannot see this, how login program is working, how registration program is working, or what code they have written, what database they are using. These activities, we can never able to do uh, see that. We can we don't see that. We don't get permission to see that. We, we can't see that. So that's the reason this is called backend for the project or for the application. What we call? We call it as a backend. backend. And the development of this is called backend development. And here, uh, this side, if you see this blue color thing, it's called front end. Any user, if you wants to, you know, uh, open your web application and he wants to interact with your web application, so definitely it'll be uh, connecting to connecting through this one that is like you know, in the browser whatever it uh, you know website is there from that only you'll be connecting to the complete application and you will do certain activities on that right? so that's why we call it as front end and this development is called front end development so if you want to become a back end developer you should be good with one of these languages and framework you can learn and database knowledge you can become back end if you want to become front end developer you should be good with html css and as well as javascript as I stated that the frameworks are very important in real-time development. So as HTML, CSS are very simple language. We don't have much, uh, you know, or like a separate frameworks for them. But coming to the JavaScript term, here we have frameworks. That too, if you look at this backend side, uh, we have multiple flavors, like, you know, different, different technologies. But coming to this uh, front end, we have only one technology called JavaScript, coming to the programming language. So that's the reason here you don't have only one uh, framework here here you're having multiple frameworks are available so they are like either angular or people can go with you know angular or react like Vue.js, like uh, umber.js like that you have so many you know so many js files are there. so many are there so that is color you know? Uh, JS which means so many JS, JavaScript related frameworks are available. But you don't require to learn all of them and uh, use all of them. You have to be good with one of the frameworks. Uh, but among them, these three are more popular. Uh, exclusively, first two are, you know, uh, widely used in the industry. 
but uh, coming to the react in recent years the popularity of react has been increased like anything and due to its features different different features we can talk about them in the future sessions but it will have so many you know uh, features and especially compared to angular the main thing is angular is having learning curve even the learning curve for angular is more compared to react that's the reason uh, in our course we'll be using react js as a framework so if you opt for uh, what i say like full stack development then you'll be learning front end and as well as back end so in the industry there used to be back end developer separate front end developer separate uh, in old and less but uh, they are expecting the persons to do both uh, both the sides front end and as well as back end of the web application and such development is called full, st uh, full stack development and such people are known as full stack developers here so uh, if you want to become a full stack developer you need to learn front end and as well as back end if you are already good at back end you can learn front end if you are already good at front end you can learn back end you don't know anything then you can start the journey from the front end so in our course uh, this course is for learning react js but uh, the prerequisite for that is one should be good with the javascript one should be very good with the javascript knowledge if you have uh, understanding of html and css that is enough but coming to the uh, javascript you should be very good with. that's the reason my react js course here what i am doing is uh, i'll be starting from the javascript so i don't want people uh, directly join for react so what I am doing is, I want people to join from JavaScript. Even though it is my React code, I will start everything from the scratch. First, I will talk about JavaScript exclusively. And once we are done with complete JavaScript, then we will move to React JS. This will be your course. After that, uh, uh, if you are interested in learning backend, then we will be learning backend as well. So the backend I will be teaching in two flavors here, guys. That is, you know, I will be talking about java with spring and next little no changes but that will be there only after you know completion of the react changes so uh, in this course uh, you know, if you start from the javascript here you'll be doing uh, so lot of task you'll be doing more than uh, 20 plus uh, real time task you'll be doing uh, wrote this course and the course will be completely you know, the practical course and every day whatever uh, you know we have discussed the same depending on uh, that uh, concepts will be practicing that is different and even i will be giving separate tasks to you know, implement uh, different you know, strategies related to that and uh, especially the real-time oriented task will be there apart from that uh, only for javascript and uh, uh, you know react js will be having two live projects will be created only for this javascript and react once you are back end is that then again it will be increased so yeah that's it that is what you know we are going to do in our uh, course and exclusively for javascript and react here i don't want to talk total full stack i'm just talking about javascript and uh, react here. so that's it uh, uh that's it for the demonstration i don't want to get into the technical details of each one in on in this first session itself i just want to give you the brief introduction about you know what is web application development actually full stack development is nothing but it's a uh, end to end web application development process is nothing but it's a full stack development yeah. so i hope you people got some idea so why uh, you know we need to learn uh, full stack development and why we need to learn javascript and react js so if you are having uh, any doubt uh, regarding the same, uh, so you people can ask your questions. I am open to your questions, guys. I will be happy to answer you. You can ask your question by unmuting yourself or you can even send your questions in chat box. Malish. Uh, yeah, Kishore. 
so uh, along with this uh, i script also will be covered or only javascript no no only javascript yeah, yeah because uh, actually for angular it's a prerequisite but for javascript uh, for react js we could do it through javascript right so that's why we'll be doing but complete javascript from the scratch will be learning okay yeah i don't know yeah any other doubt no it's fine so so basically i am looking for the uh, uh, the uh, uh, script as well along with the uh, javascript so in my project uh, we are using uh, as well uh, basically uh, the complete uh, uh, uh the project will be developed in the typescript uh, react with the okay. typescript okay, so okay. okay. so like uh, is it enough like uh, uh, if you learn with the react js so will you be able to uh, uh, yeah you can do actually if you do it through javascript you can develop it through typescript uh, what i say like you know um the component uh, style the way you write uh, everything is same just uh, that uh, you'll be using typescript that's it just another so it's script. more into like Re if you are good if, good in the react js then we'll be able to do it with the react typescript uh, as well. yeah with with actually the uh, framework is react js only actually uh, people used to develop with react only but uh, uh recently the you know uh, for angular angular people are using uh, typescript for that people are already learning typescript for java uh, what i say like angular you cannot develop through only javascript there you need uh, typescript but coming to react js that was not required but uh, as people already learning typescript uh, they allowed you know this react also through typescript flavor but uh, if you can do it through javascript then it's enough uh, to you know uh, get the hold of uh, you know typescript if you can do it through javascript okay yeah yeah uh, there will be some core parts like you know component creations and uh, making the component to communicate with each other uh, okay. implementing the routing dynamic routing so these things are very important and connecting to the back end apis you know uh, consume the api and get uh, display that data onto the you know uh, web page and uh, creating the single page applications all these are like you know core concepts if we can implement those core, core concepts with the language like javascript properly then same thing you can do with the typescript it's not a bit that too typescript is not something different language it it, it usually follows the javascript structure only that too okay yeah uh ready uh you have any doubt if you have any doubt just you can And much uh, another person. Uh, you have any doubt? You are able to hear me? Ready and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. hearing you. Yeah, I don't have any question. I don't have any questions. Yeah, you are clear, right? Okay. I can hear you properly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Kesha, one more doubt. Uh, uh, just want to know. So, like, I mean, uh, the, behind the React, uh, the come uh, whatever the uh, concept is, uh, React J JavaScript, React JS only it is, or uh, or that, tell me I mean, again. Tell me again. So, what I'm trying to say, like, uh, so whatever the uh, React TypeScript is there. So whatever the concept, like um, uh, core concept, like um, uh, like uh, uh, new state and the sir, states will be there, right? States and hooks will be there. Yeah. So those yeah. will also comes uh, in the React JS or uh, will be separated in the React uh, uh, 
React TypeScript and uh, React JS. So those concept will be also comes under JS as well. Yes, yes, all the concepts will be there. Yeah. So all the concepts, you know, uh, as a fresher, uh, you know, uh, as a core concepts, like you know, what you actually you know implement in a, a project, the concepts like um, I I named only few, but uh, like you know, prop uh, props is there, uh, like yeah. you know, states is there. Yeah, all the concepts will be doing. Actually, it's name is like React, React JS, we say, but it's React only. Yeah. Okay. So that's why, like, basically, if 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 I uh, learn the concept, so he's like able to implement in the TypeScript as well. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes, that is another style of writing uh, React JS uh, framework related components. One okay, is but concepts will be uh, okay. Concepts will be the same, like in the TypeScript yes. and uh, JS. Yes, yes. Okay. So we'll be we'll cover those at least concept like uh, uh, it will be uh, easy for us. Like uh, not I'm not asking them. So at least if we uh, after the JS uh, React JS, so like uh, how we can write the uh, right into TypeScript as well. It will, be, will it cover? Uh, no, no, kind of overview if you want, I can give you like uh, how things will be in TypeScript and all, but uh, through the course, I will not be teaching TypeScript, but okay. I can compare that. Like once you're done with the uh, React JS, once you're done with React, uh, with the JavaScript, then I can just how it will be on um, TypeScript mode. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you, Kish. Yeah. Yeah, okay, guys, then yeah, as today is the first row, first class, right? So I don't want to get much into uh, uh, the technical details of each thing. Uh, I hope I already gave uh, the introduction related uh, to all the technologies. So in the coming session, uh, you're going to learn exclusively about, you know, JavaScript. So without wasting much time, uh, next today, like the uh, next class, like Monday. So Monday will be starting. Uh, uh, so directly JavaScript. Uh, we will start everything from the scratch. That how to embed or how to attach JavaScript to your web page. From that moment onwards, we start. So what are the different ways we can attach? So we will see that, and uh, you know, we'll start with the JavaScript. Once we are done with the complete JavaScript, then only we move to you know React clear so that's it guys uh, so i'm looking forward to meet you on uh, monday bye guys take care